challenge is to then consolidate all the information from these different sources. This then heavily relies on the manual transcription. So while a lot of these software packages, they do have a lot of the tools that are required and necessary for drug development, there are some vital tools and pieces that are missing from them. Welcome back to The Analytical Wavelength, a podcast about chemistry and chemical data brought to you by ACD Labs. I am your returning co-host, Jesse, And I'm your new co-host, Sarah. And we're excited to bring you a new season of our podcast. I'm really looking forward to this season. We have some really interesting discussions lined up. And since it's our first season since the return of in-person conferences and events, we're planning on keeping you updated on those as well. Additionally, for season three of the Analytical Wavelength, we're going to be focused on sharing insights from our colleagues here at XCD Labs. That's right. Working every day alongside top scientists in the pharmaceutical industry to help them work with their chemical data, our team has a unique perspective. Instead of keeping this to ourselves, we want to share their experiences and expertise with you. To start things off, we are bringing you a conversation with Alex Wicked. He is an application scientist, and he was one of the co-authors on a paper about data management in pharmaceutical development that was published last year in OPRMD. This paper was quite well received and seems to have struck a chord with those in the pharmaceutical process chemistry space, as it really articulates the challenges they face with analytical data management. But I really believe this is a topic for any scientists out there who feel like they rely too heavily on Excel. Let's learn more. Hi, Alex. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. How about you, Jesse? Doing, doing great, doing great. Um, so yeah, we wanted to talk to you today about um, the paper that you wrote a little while ago. Uh, can you start off by just introducing yourself and telling us a little bit about what you do here at ACD Labs and uh, as well as your favorite chemical? Yeah, of course. So I'm Alex Waked. I'm an application scientist at ACP Labs. You know, my job entails a few things. You know, first, I learn about and understand our customers' you know, current analytical workflows that uh, they have in place and where their gaps currently are. Uh, and then as a you know, second step, I assist you know, alongside you know, a team of us at ACP Labs to implement one, of our, one or more of our products. Um, into their current workflows, which should address, you know, the customer's specific needs and requirements, right, uh, to address essentially their gaps that they've described in their workflows. My favorite chemical is actually not necessarily a chemical per se, it's more of a family of compounds uh, called or what we label as azophosphonium cations. So those are just a family of um, cations that I worked with during my PhD that are fairly straightforward to, you know, synthetically prepare and what I really enjoy about them are their colors are really quite vibrant, which is in contrast to a lot of other compounds I work with. That's awesome. Very cool. Uh, as Jesse mentioned, about a year ago, you and our colleagues Arvin Moser and Joe DiMartino published an article called Consolidating and Managing Data for Drug Development Within a Pharmaceutical Laboratory in OPRD. Can you provide a high-level summary of what this article was about? Yeah, of course. The uh, article is essentially a perspective describing some of the main aspects of you know, the drug development cycle and how you know, the ACD Lab's commercial technology called Luminata is used to address you know, the particular data analysis and data storage needs you know, related to these aspects. So, you know, in addition to describing Luminata itself, we also present comparisons between Luminata and other you know, commercial programs that are currently used for drug development, you know, such as Microsoft Excel being a big one. Yeah, and that's kind of where I wanted to go next. Um, Excel plays a really big role in uh, pharmaceutical development today. Can you tell us a little bit about that? And just you know, maybe for people who aren't in pharmaceutical development, give them a sense of uh, you know, how important it is in the workflows of uh, a lot of organizations. Yeah, of course. Those uh, Excel documents and spreadsheets essentially become the ultimate repository of information that's extracted you know, from multiple data sources uh, that a company may use. So for example, companies may use um, ELNs, uh, LIM systems, uh, CDS systems, where they store you know, different analytical data, chromatographic data, you know, reaction data. 
And in order to, and since these are typically incompatible with each other, a lot of the information from these various systems have to get exported and consolidated into you know, the, the, these various Excel spreadsheets. Okay. And uh, these spreadsheets and these files are used in both you know, early stage development as well as late stage development in the drug development cycle. Uh, you know, for the purposes of tracking impurity profiles across different processes, across different stages, across different projects, right? Um, or even the uh, storing data for process control studies, force degradation and stability studies, you know, batch genealogy, where they're looking at the history of um, the batches and lots that have been prepared for their different, um, you know, intermediates and APIs and impurities. So, you know, when companies are generating reports for either internal purposes, so they're having internal meetings, or if they're for regulatory, you know, filings, they typically have to generate these tables from these Excel spreadsheets. These become really important in terms of storing a lot of the data that companies are producing. Wow, yeah, that sounds like a lot of uh, pressure almost to put on one Excel spreadsheet. Can you elaborate on any other issues uh, with using Excel? Would you say that Excel is, or software in general, is slowing down pharmaceutical development? Yeah, so, uh, you know, as you just mentioned, uh, one Excel spreadsheet. So typically, um, it's the case where there are multiple Excel spreadsheets, you know, that store different pieces of data and different pieces of information related to the different stages of you know, drug development. So there are going to be multiple um, Excel spreadsheets. They're going to be stored in you know, separate locations, right? So you'll have each individual scientist, you know, local computers, right? You have different shared networks. And these alone pose, can pose quite a few problems. So first of all, if you have data stored in different networks, these different networks you know, may have different uh, permissions according to you know, which users may have access to some of them, right? Many times as well, these different spreadsheets contain common data between them. Um, so even though they're different files themselves, you may have some um, you know, common data that's stored within each of the spreadsheets. So you can imagine how tedious and how difficult right, it can become to you know, ensure that when changes can be made in one spreadsheet, the same changes must also be done and applied to the other relevant ones. All right. So an example of... Uh, a change like this is that throughout the drug development process, the names of impurities will typically change. You know, you can start off when you collect the initial sets of analytical data from your, you know, from your processes, where the identities of the impurities are completely unknown, right? And you label them with just an RRT value, a relative retention time value. Uh, and then later on in the processes, when, you know, these particular impurities are deemed to be you know, important in terms of its toxicological effects, right? Um, where those compounds need to be then elucidated. So after the comments are elucidated, you're given these different names. You know, starting off giving a compound an unknown name versus later on in the development where these compounds do have names, when you make that change to an Excel spreadsheet, you have to remember, you know, where else in what other spreadsheets, you know, this name can be found in so that, you know, the spreadsheets and reports are consistent between one another. And in addition to this as well, right? When any modifications are made to this data, they always have to be tracked using an audit trail, right? This is really important um, for companies to keep this, uh, you know, to store all this information, what has been changed, who has changed it, and when has it been changed? And this is very challenging to do in Excel, you know, especially when you consider, you know, how many different people and chemists have access to the same files and how many different versions of files, you know, that may exist. And then, you know, finally, I think a last major issue with Excel is that chemists will frequently have to generate chromatogram overlays between different stages of a process. So uh, this is done to visually compare the data between different stages or between different processes, right? Or, or even between different lots or batches of material. These are done for you know, different reports that they may have to generate. And since Excel does not store you know, this kind of live analytical data of the chromatograms, 
this type of comparative analysis is just really challenging to perform in Excel. Overall, the answer, you know, the question here is Excel slowing down the pharmaceutical development? I, I believe it is. Yeah, so that really brings me actually to my next question uh, very well, which is about live analytical data, because it, it is something that's mentioned a number of times here. And it's a theme that we talk about a lot, actually, at ACP Labs, the importance of live analytical data. Can you explain what is meant by that term and then how it compares to you know, dead data and why the difference is important? Yeah, so when we say live data, this typically refers to the connection between the reported analytical results that you may see, for example, in a table when you're looking at peak errors and the raw data collected by the instrument itself. So in other words, the instrument data, the raw data can be reprocessed, right? So you can uh, do repicking of the peaks. You can do reintegration of some of the peaks. You can rename some of the peaks in your chromatographic data, right? And when you apply these changes, uh, these uh, should also be immediately reflected in the reported results so in the tables. So when there is that connection between the changes that you make in the analytical data processing versus the results in the table itself, that is what we refer to as live data. So if we look at examples of you know, dead data, a couple of examples are PDF files or Excel spreadsheets. Dead data are basically less desirable to have because it becomes difficult to manipulate and interact with it without having to go back to the programs where the data were originally collected. For example, if you have an Excel spreadsheet with you know, peak areas of a particular chromatogram, if you go back into the software and you know, do re-peak picking or rename some of the peaks, those changes are not reflected in the Excel spreadsheet. So that's an example of one of the changes you know, I described before where you know, you make a change in the original data, you have to then go to all the Excel spreadsheets that contain that data and manually apply these changes. Another example is PDF reports that contain chromatograms. You know, they contain screenshots of chromatograms. You can't easily blow up the baseline, for example, or zoom into particular regions for further inspection of, uh, you know, of the chromatographic data itself. To do these, you have to go back to the original you know, programs of the original raw data sets where you would be able to apply these. So this is why when we're referring to live data or dead data, live data is definitely preferred because you definitely have a lot more flexibility and freedom in terms of interacting with it and manipulating it. So you touched on Excel and uh, PDFs there, but there are also many other data management tools, such as ELN, CDSs, and LIMS, for example. Do any of these include the necessary data management functionality for pharmaceutical development? That's a great question. So these other types of software packages, you know, they do indeed contain some of the data management tools that are necessary for drug development, but they also each have different vital pieces that are missing, right? Uh, and in a lot of these cases, these missing pieces cannot be ad addressed, at least not without significant, you know, customization or manual addition of some tabular data. Um, so, for example, we consider, you know, some of the following important tools for the drug development. You know, there's chemical structure awareness. So being able to, you know, for example, search by actual chemical structure or, you know, connect chemical structures to particular compound names, right? Second point or second tool is, you know, storing and processing the live vendor data across mobile stages and processes. And point three, comparing and overlaying you know, live chromatographic data. So as I described before, and, you know, a fourth point I'll just mention uh, just for now is, you know, uh, the ability to create dynamic tables to compare, you know, the peak areas across different stages and processes. So looking at the actual results. So these are just four of some of the tools that are quite important. And in the cases of, you know, LIMS, ELN, CDS, a lot of these tools are not able to be used in the software packages. So for example, LIMS does not contain any of these tools. ELNs don't contain these tools except for the chemical structure awareness. CDSs don't contain these tools except for being able to compare and overlay chromatograms. And lastly, you know, the challenge is to then consolidate 
all the information from these different sources, uh, sources of data into a single table or report, right? Which this then heavily relies on the manual transcription into Excel spreadsheets. And so while a lot of these software packages, uh, they do have a lot of the tools that are required and necessary for drug development, there are some vital tools and pieces that are missing from them. Yeah, and that then transitions to talking about Luminato, which is a, a piece of software that at ACD Labs um, have developed to try to bridge some of these gaps and bring together this data. Um, so can you explain a little bit as to how Luminata fits into this conversation and um, ties together some of these concerns? Yeah, Luminata is ultimately a commercial technology right? that is developed by ACD Labs, right? That is used as a CMC, so Chemistry Manufacturing and Controls Decision Support Tool. So it's basically an alternative to the software packages that we were just describing now, right? Excel, LIMS, et cetera. And in Luminata, uh, there are a few points I'll just touch upon here that really emphasize, you know, how or emphasizes, you know, the advantages that it may offer over some other ones, the other packages. So whereas previously we were describing Excel is used as the ultimate repository for you know, the data from different sources, in Luminata, the scientists can store and utilize the analytical data you know, from different vendors, from different sources, uh, and they can all store it in one place. And it can also be accessed by however many scientists you know, are given access to Luminata in the company. So you know, the live analytical data from multiple vendors can be stored and interacted with as well within Luminata. So, so referring back to uh, what we mentioned before, these data are stored as live data in Luminata, where you could apply, you know, reprocessing of a chromatogram, right? Uh, where you can, you know, edit peak integrations, you can edit peak names, you can edit chemical structures, and applying any changes within Luminata will automatically update basically every table within Luminata, which contains that information already. So this already just bypasses almost all of the manual transcription that you know, the scientists would have to do using Excel. Um, and this in turn you know, reduces the chances of human error, obviously, and it also saves the scientists hours of time of you know, sifting through different Excel spreadsheets and different you know, pieces of original data. And, you know, once the data is in Luminata as well, users are able to perform different dynamic searches for data analysis, you know, from which they can easily generate tables and chromatogram overlays for their reporting purposes. So these points that I've just mentioned here, I think demonstrate that Luminata does contain many of the major tools that render the drug development cycle more efficient, actually, for companies. What also speaks, I think, to the effectiveness and validity of Luminata is that our article was published you know, in OPRD, uh, and it had over a thousand views in just the first, you know, first month after publication. So there are other scientists and other companies who do see the use and effectiveness of Luminata. Yeah, certainly. It seems like a topic that a lot of people and companies would be interested in, but it might also seem like kind of a big first step. So do you have any suggestions for listeners who are maybe looking to just start to re reduce their reliance on Excel? Yeah, so that's a great point. Uh, with you know any new software or new programs that anyone really uses, there's always a bit of a learning curve, right? So the first suggestions to reduce yeah, your reliance on using Excel is to just get informed, first of all, about the alternatives to Excel right? that companies have been moving towards, such as some of the packages that we mentioned earlier, ELNs, CDSs, LIMS, Luminata. These are all alternatives that, again, if you read into and look into, you can really see how they differ from Excel. So uh, one thing I will mention here, too, is the article that we wrote, I think, does a great job at outlining the differences between all these systems uh, in a fairly straightforward table that we actually have in the paper. Second, what I would suggest is do some homework and find some companies right, who have been implementing 
these other systems and other packages, you know, and learn about their firsthand experiences using, you know, both Excel and these other packages. Hearing about this, you know, directly from the scientists who are, you know, so to say, in the trenches, right, of this uh, drug development research really, I think, puts into perspective how much benefit these systems can give you over Excel, right? It'll give you a clear idea of what aspects of their daily activities really benefit from using these alternatives, such as Luminata. Yeah, I think that that's a uh, something that I see a lot. You know, it's easy to hear. Some people say, oh, it's more efficient. It's uh, easier and everything. But when you actually talk to the scientists, like, no, this is a game changer in terms of my day-to-day work, uh, that it can it can make a really big difference. But with that, then, I just want to thank you for coming on to the podcast and being uh, our guest for the first episode of the new season, Alex. Thank you so much. Yeah, it was a pleasure to be on. Thanks, Jesse and Sarah. That was a great conversation to start off our new season. Thank you very much to Alex for hanging out with us. If you want to check out the paper we discussed or learn more about Luminata, there will be links in the show notes. That's all for this episode. Tune in next time to get an update on what's happening in the world of NMR. Thanks for joining us. The Analytical Wavelength is brought to you by ACD Labs. We create software to help scientists make the most of their analytical data by predicting molecular properties, and by organizing and analyzing their experimental results. To learn more, please visit us at www.acdlabs.com.